Now watch this. His death leads us away from the house of bondage. Remember what Egypt represents? The house of bondage. All the way to Exodus chapter 11, you have a series of miracles. And then in Exodus 12, this is where the Passover takes place. The Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This month shall be unto you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. So in other words, what God is telling the children of Israel, it is going to mark a new beginning for you. This is to mark new time for you, children of Israel. You're going to forget about old times. Ha, 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 They are about to be delivered from Egypt. But I want you to notice what it says next to this chapter 13, verse 3. And Moses said unto the people, Remember this day in which you came out of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Egypt is synonymous with the house of bondage. So let's put that together. God is saying this Passover marks a new beginning for you. It marks new time. You're going to forget about old times, old time. I'm going to deliver you from the house of bondage. If you're with me so far, give me something. Now they leave Egypt and I want you to watch what happens next because the Bible says in Exodus chapter 14 and verse three, Pharaoh decides to go back after the children of Israel. Okay. He's going after them because he doesn't want them to experience new time. He doesn't want them to experience new times. He's going to go after them. And I want you to notice what it says. Exodus 14, 3. For Pharaoh will say to the children of Israel, they are entangled in the land. Okay. I want you to, I have that word highlighted in yellow because I want you to remember that word. Entangled. Pharaoh is hoping that they will get entangled so that he can draw them back to Egypt. Back to the house of bondage. It goes on to say they are entangled in the wilderness and the wilderness has shut them in. And I will harden Pharaoh's heart that he shall follow after them. And I will be honored upon Pharaoh and upon all his hosts that the Egyptians may know that I am the Lord. And they did so. So what's happening here? Pharaoh is going after the children of Israel. He's hoping that they get entangled in the wilderness. Reading on. Verse 5 of Exodus 14, it was told the king of Egypt that the people fled and the heart of Pharaoh and of his servants was turned against the people. And they said, why have they done this? That we have let Israel go from serving us. Remember that word, those words, serving us. They were serving in the house of bondage. This is powerful, guys, because what I want you to see here is that Pharaoh is coming after them. He's trying to bring them back to old times. Notice how the children of Israel respond when they hear that Pharaoh is coming after them. In Exodus 14, verse 12, the children of Israel say this, is not this the word that we did tell thee in Egypt saying, let us alone that we may serve the Egyptians. You know, I praise God that Moses did not leave the children of Israel alone. I praise God. Children of Israel thought it would have been better. Notice what it says. For it had been better for us to serve the Egyptians than that we should die in the wilderness. Catch this crucial point. The children of Israel would have rather served than die. They were afraid of Pharaoh. They were afraid of dying. Notice that in Exodus 12, verse two, we saw this month shall be unto you the beginning of month. It shall be the first month of the year to you. So in a sense, the Passover marks the beginning of something, the beginning of new times. However, 
It also marks something else. Because in Exodus 14, 13, the Bible says here, And Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show you today. For the Egyptians who you have seen today, you shall see them again no more forever. All right, guys, watch this. In one sense, God is saying the Passover marks the beginning of something for you. But in another sense, it marks the ending of something for you. Because when the children of Israel in Exodus chapter 14, remember, they're at the Red Sea. They're at the where? Yes, the Red Sea. When they're at the Red Sea, God is about to do something that's going to bring an end to something for them. Are you catching this? This is to mark that what's about to happen at the Red Sea will mark the end of your fear of your oppressor. So in a sense, the Passover represents the beginning and also the ending. We might say the alpha and the... Yes, yes, yes. I, I think you are following along. So watch this, guys. Passover, the beginning of something. Red Sea, the ending of something. The beginning and the ending. And I want you to notice this, okay? Because in Exodus chapter 14, verse 24, verse 23, the Bible says, And the Egyptians pursued and went in after them to the midst of the sea, even all Pharaoh's horses, his chariots, and his horsemen. And it came to pass that in the morning watch. I just got to pause right there. Scholars say that it was between the 3 o'clock and the 6 o'clock hour of the morning. It's in the morning watch that the Lord looked unto the host of the Egyptians through the pillar of fire and cloud and troubled the hosts of the Egyptians. Moses stretched out his hand over the sea and the Lord caused the sea to go back by a strong east wind all that night and made the sea dry and the waters were divided. And the children of Israel went into the midst of the sea upon the dry ground and the waters were a wall unto them on their right hand on their and on their left. So check this out, guys. Children of Israel are crossing the Red Sea all night. God has just performed a miracle. They have crossed the Red, Red Sea and escaped what was certain death. The thought of death must have been heavy upon them, but God does something miraculous and brings them through. And in the morning watch, it is when the sea returns to its strength and the enemies of God's people are swallowed up. In the morning, early, some speculate that this was on the first day of the week. Now, Check this out, guys. What has God done to the Red Sea? He parted the sea, and now they're walking through changed nature. All of this, beloved, connected with the Passover and connected with the Red Sea experience. It is after this that we get to the book of Exodus 15, and I want you to notice the children of Israel are now standing on the opposite side of the shore. And the Bible says here, Then sang Moses and the children of Israel this song unto the Lord, He is my God, and I will prepare him a habitation, my father's God, and I will exalt him. Now watch this. The Lord is a man of war. The Lord is his name. Beloved, it is after this experience of the Passover, a lamb being sacrificed, the, the Red Sea experience coming through what appears to be certain death that the children of Israel now stand on the opposite, on the opposite shore singing the song of Moses. They are celebrating God as a man of war. They walked through changed nature and now we're standing on the opposite shore singing the song of Moses and the Lamb. It is in Exodus 25, 8 that the house of God is introduced. Did you catch that? 
Let them make me a sanctuary that I may dwell among them. The sanctuary is the house of God. Watch this. What has God done? He has led them through the Passover and the Red Sea experience. He has led them from the house of bondage in which they served to the house of God, which is a house of deliverance. In Matthew chapter 2, verse 16, Herod, when he saw that he was mocked of the wise men, was exceeding wroth and went forth and slew all the children that were in Bethlehem and in all the coasts thereof from two years old and under, according to the time which he had diligently inquired of the wise men. You remember this, right? When Jesus was born, there was a death decree. Just as there was a death decree for Moses, so there was a death decree in the time of Jesus. Just as Moses left Egypt, I want you to notice Matthew chapter 2, 14, when he arose, he took the young child, this is Joseph and his mother, by night and departed into Egypt and was there until the death of Herod that it might be fulfilled, which was saying, spoken of, by the, of the Lord by the prophet, saying, out of Egypt have I called my son. There's more because you remember that the name Moses means drawn. I'm, go, I'm getting to the, to the Passover, okay? I'm getting to Christ's death, burial, and resurrection. So you just need to follow this. Remember, just as the name Moses means drawn out of water, check this out, then Jesus cometh from Galilee to Jordan unto John to be baptized of him. But John forbade him, saying, I need to be baptized of thee, and comest thou to me? And Jesus answered, saying unto him, Suffer it be so for now. Then he suffered him. Just as Moses was drawn out of waters to accomplish a mission, so Jesus himself was baptized in preparation for his mission. You remember that Moses goes into the wilderness for 40 years, just as Jesus in Matthew 4 verse 1, then was Jesus led up of the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And when he had fasted, how long? 40 days and 40 nights he was afterward a hunger. Jesus was in the wilderness for 40 days as Moses was in the wilderness for 40 years. Just as at the end of this time, Moses returns to begin to deliver his people out of the house of bondage. So Jesus returns out of the wilderness to accomplish the very same thing, but on a much larger scale. Moses returns performing miracles, Matthew 4, 23, and Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing all manner of sickness and all manner of de disease among the people. Beloved, what I'm trying to tell you is that what happened in Exodus was a miniature scale of what would happen in the life of Jesus, culminating with his, with his death, burial, and resurrection escaping certain death. Then we come to Matthew chapter 26, where the Bible says it came to pass when Jesus had finished all these things, he said unto his disciples, you know that after two days is the feast of the Passover and the son of man is betrayed to be crucified. You get this. Are you catching this? Jesus died on the Passover. His death was to mark the beginning. Oh man, you're all not feeling me. The death of Jesus was specifically to mark the beginning of time for you and I. Forget about old times. That's what the Passover does. In John 14, verse 6, I want you to watch this. We know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? John 14, 6. Jesus said, I am the way. Pause for a second. The Greek word used here for the way is the word hodas. H-O-D-U-S. Hodas. Now, I need, I need to just ask you a question. What word does that sound like to you? Hold us. Jesus says, I am the hold us. If you're thinking right now, wait a minute, that sounds like Exodus. You're right, because that's where the word comes from. The word hold us means way or road. So X out of hold us the way. 
That's what the book, that's what the title of the book literally means, the way out. Jesus is saying, I am the Hodas. <laughs> I am the Hodas X, the way out. The way out of what? The way out of the house of bondage. Through my death, I provided you with a new beginning, a new history, a new starting point. This is why the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. You are, you are actually experiencing new beginnings. Jesus is your exodus. Now watch this. His death leads us away from the house of bondage. Remember what Egypt represents? The house of bondage. In Romans chapter 7 verse 23, Paul said these words, but I see another law in my members warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into what? Bringing me into captivity. Yes, guys. Yes. Bringing me into what? Captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. O oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? Beloved, this was the house of bondage, the flesh. All right. Look, don't get me wrong. The old man is not going to let you just leave freely. <laughs> He's not going to let you leave without a fight. Pharaoh, the old man, is not going to let you escape. He's going to want to try to bring you back to old times. He's going to try to bring you back to old times, to old ways, to bring you back into the house of bondage. In fact, 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 20 puts it this way. For if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and they are again entangled. That word entangled is only used only three times in the scripture. One of them is when Pharaoh says, I hope they get entangled in the wilderness. The other one is right here. The old man wants to get us entangled, wants to get us entangled again in the old ways. Just as the children of Israel went through the Red Sea and it was in the morning watch that the enemy was defeated, so when Jesus ascended from the grave that Sunday morning, in the morning watch, the enemies that would draw us back into the old ways, those enemies were defeated by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. 